back from a walk or a walk at the beach, you're more relaxed, more motivated, or feel happier. Well, there's science behind it. The sad reality is that people are increasing the time spent inside. With more than 50% of the world being urbanized, we lose touch with nature. People are spending more time inside than ever before, with the average American spending 93% of their total existence inside. Computers, tablets, cell phones, and video games prevent us from getting back into nature which is especially bad for people like me. From a stroll through a city park to a day spent hiking in the wilderness, exposure to nature has been linked to a host of different benefits, including improved attention, lower stress, better mood, reduced risk of chronic diseases, and even upticks in empathy and corporation. What better way to inspire people to engage with the outdoors than an outdoor adventure film? Hi, my name is Fee McLeod, and for my masterworks, I would like to show you through film and research why you should spend your time outside rather than inside. My younger sister and I are very lucky to have the parents we do. Ever since we were very little, we went on hiking trips, kayaking trips, skiing, we've gone rafting, and many other out adventures outdoors. I developed a passion for the outdo outdoor activities as a result. I feel better after being in nature, and I was truly curious why. Why am I more productive after I, if I work outside? Why do I feel more relaxed when hiking versus at the mall? This curiosity led me to my research topic. If you're a fellow outdoor enthusiast, you probably have seen or heard of outdoor adventure films. I grew up watching them, and I loved everything about them. From the cinematography, the stories, the action-packed beauty of outdoor activity always left me inspired and feeling like I could go climb Mount Everest. I wanted to create the same feeling for others. I want to inspire active and adventurous lifestyles. I want to make people leave their seats wanting to ride, to hop on a pair of skis or ride a bike. And from my experience, films have always been able to do that. So with this in mind, I would like to take you through the process of my, creating my own film from start to finish. Starting with brainstorming. Brainstorming topics and themes was needed to start the process. So I came up with many, many different ideas, all of them different, from connection to people and culture, to play and challenges, to connection with Earth. Here's an example of an early stage of my rough storyline and themes. You can see here that I had many different just general topics and they didn't go into much detail. Oh, here, sorry. The only problem that I had too many different ideas um, to put in a five minute film, to put in a five minute film, I combined and edited them down as to one final idea to show young people and kids that connection can be made outdoors and it can be an escape from our busy lives. Overall, I wanted to inspire youth to go outside because I think they deserve the chance to learn or be taught the benefits of being outdoors. Here's my finished storyline. It looks like this. The red meaning it's the shots or visual parts. Like, like any film, the story is one of the most important aspects and without a compelling story, your film is boring and unfavorable, unfavorable to viewers. Film plan. Films are visual stories, so what would I visually show that connects to what I was trying to say? Well, more brainstorming and planning was needed to answer this question. A shots checklist. My advisor, Ethan, helped me organize my thoughts and ideas in what was called a shots checklist, a long document that consisted of the where, how, what, when, and who I would be filming. This was a great idea because it helped me organize what I wanted to show and how I would do it. On the left is the earlier version, which you can't read it, but it has sort of a general idea and not a very detailed explanation of what I was going to film, versus this one is super detailed. It has location, some of them say who I'm with, like my sister Charlotte, and exactly what I'd be filming. So. Unfortunately, I tore my AC of skiing. My friends were so kind to be busy documenting the event here. <laughs> it was a major setback in my ability to film outdoor activities like hiking and skiing. I had to adapt, rewrite, and reorganize my storyline to figure out what I could actually film. Luckily, a lot of my friends were willing to be a huge help and film what I couldn't, for example, skiing. In March, however, I, my body started to recover and I could walk with a knee brace and go to school. I was able to do my own filming and before having surgery at the end of March. So, after tweaking up my shots checklist and seeing what needed to be filmed, I realized that filming gear is costly and there's a lot more to it than camera and microphone. Professionals have a lot of equipment from gimbals, tripods, different camera lenses, to even drones. All this equipment costs thousands of dollars, and to create a five-minute film, 
it generally prices between $1,500 to $10,000 per finished minute. So what I had was, back home, my parents own a DSLR Canon T3i Rebel camera, which is a professional camera, but it appeared that the recording function was unfortunately broken, so I couldn't use it. I also had a working GoPro Hero 7, which is an amazing little camera, but the downside is that it films with a fisheye lens, which is great for everything else. It was just great to capture wide angles, but not great for everything else. GoPros are action cameras and not exactly interview close-up cameras. The GoPro distorts the image and makes it look rounder, and then the DSLR would see what our eyes need to make things just look real. The solution I came across was an inexpensive recording camera on Amazon. This camera was simple and came with a microphone, which I needed. I also bought a little lapel mic, which was good for interviews because it captures the subject's voice rather than the background noise. I soon realized that this camera was very poor quality, and I looked to the DSLR to see if I could fix it somehow. With some research, I managed to do so, and the film feature was up and running on the better camera, which is right there. I don't have all the equipment that makes perfect, perfect movies, but I had two microphones, a professional camera, a GoPro, and a tripod. Filming was much better than I expected with the gear I had on hand. Filming. I won't go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil the end product, but I will say that I got to film in many different places with many different people. And bonus, I got to film my dad's, my friend's dad's drone. I also learned many things along the way, like how to handle the controls on the camera and how to create interesting visuals. One thing I learned was experimentation is important to understand what looks good and what does not. And when conducting an interview, I learned that the questions are the most important part. To have good, focused questions spark in-depth answers. Also, being, also the person being interviewed in the film to start by saying, repeating the question. So it is, when it was put in the film, the viewer would know exactly what they're answering. So for example, if I asked Freya, why do you like the outdoors? And she said, it makes me feel safe and at home, and I put that in the movie. They have no idea what she's talking about, but if she answered with, I love the outdoors because it makes me feel safe and at home, they know exactly what she's talking about. I also realized that it's easy to picture the shot, but to execute it is much trickier. I'd always find myself in the weirdest positions that I didn't imagine I'd have to be in. And drones are very complicated machines. I will show you here. Wait. Sean, I'm sorry I crashed it. Patience is also needed. It takes time and effort to get the shot visualized. Being creative helps as well. There were many times where I didn't exactly go following the plan of my shots checklist, and I came up with ideas on the spot. There were many, many more filming experiences, but each one, and each one I enjoyed, but I cannot share them all with you today, or else that would take many hours. Editing was like a constant battle between my, me and my computer. I used an editing software called Premiere Pro, which you can see here is very complicated and very hard to learn. First thing I did was organize folders. These, this is where all my film was, and all these folders had lots of different clips. You would put them into here, which is your story, which, which is your timeline, and called your sequence. This is where you do the editing, you do an audio, you do all that fun stuff that makes your movies. And then up here, you can just control. This is this is like an, uh, an audio panel, so you can control the audio and how um, the details work. Here's where the effects are, and the folders are different transitions, color correctors, and noise reduction. I used a lot of these because this would make my form, my film more stable, and it could be, it just looks better if I use effects. Um, editing was like what consisted of cutting clips, mending audio, adding effects, and organizing folders, and folders of film. It was time consuming and sometimes frustrating, but overall fun to see my work come together. In your minds, you're probably thinking, well, show us the film already. So I'm glad to announce that the waiting is over. I would like to present to you the working of nine months, Back to Nature.
As recent as 10 years ago, adolescents reported the biggest issue for them was drugs and alcohol. But today, it's depression and anxiety. And many say it's almost epidemic. The alarming increase that we've seen in childhood obesity and attention deficit disorder over the last quarter century is related to the fact that for the first time in our history, most of our kids are growing up without a real connection to nature. Right. What are we doing to kids? We're creating environments for kids at school and at home in which they are using fewer and fewer of their senses, that they're down to a couple senses, staring at that screen, using their ears, and mainly their eyes to allegedly go anywhere in the world through the internet. We're creating an environment in which I believe, by definition, they are less alive. Um, I think something that people really struggle with now is that we are like brought up within the indoors. Um, the concept of like an exit sign is really bizarre because we had to um, create a building in order to have an exit. Uh, Bob Henderson, who's a famous outdoor person, petitioned at his university to get ban all exit signs um, or to change them to enter signs, to enter into the world. Um, because that is like the more natural place and uh, we become complacent and comfortable with uh, the indoors. And I think without being exposed to that natural environment, um, they lack the abilities to make connections with it and they can't use it as a resource uh, like some of the older generations use to fall back on and de-stress. My name is Phoebe, Phoebe McLeod. I'm 15 and I love the outdoors. I'm one of those kids who's like never around in the summer. Either I'm climbing some mountain or away kayaking. My parents were really good about taking me on these amazing trips and just like letting me go outside. We go on kayaking trips, canoeing trips, go backpacking. I've probably skied since I was four. I did a lot of fun things. Outdoors to me is something that we take for granted. There are beautiful things just past city limits. The outdoors have shaped who I am and what I believe in. It's a place where I go to forget, live in the moment, and let go. See, my generation lacks that skill. We are either too stuck in the past or too, too focused on the future. Going outside and doing activities lets you reconnect with yourself and your place, and there's no shortage of fun. Trust me on that one. Nature brings out the child in each of us. People don't realize that. It's so much fun to get dirty and explore the unknown. Some of the best adventures I've been on is with other people. People bring the sense of community, and especially in the outdoors, you can always find the sense of group belonging, and they will enjoy the same things you do. Experiencing things outside and together is where we become friends. The sense of community I've found outside was always a reason I loved it in the first place. Definitely how I've made some amazing connections.
reduce, but that's okay. So the film covered points on why you should go outside and how they can make connections with nature. But the bulk of my paper and what I'd like to share with you today is the benefits of being outside. To show you how beneficial the outdoors can be, I have a simple question. What do you feel when looking at this photo? Raise your hands. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> What do you feel when looking at this photo? Raise your hands. Friar. Stressed. Stressed. Lucas. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Matthias. Pain. Pain, did you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what do you feel when looking at this photo? Oh crap, sorry. Malcolm. Interested. Interested. Um Lucas again. Relax. Great. And Scott? Peace. Great. So you felt stressed, pain, and sorry, what was the other one? Overwhelmed when looking at the urban photo, but peace, relaxed, and I forget the other one. And calm when looking at nature. Well, this is because nature calms down our brain. Many studies have shown that cortisol, the main stress hormone, is decreased when, looking, when being in nature and even looking at it. The opposite happens when being in an urban environment. Studies and studies and studies have, show, have been put into the subject. It is a fairly new science, but a rapidly growing one nonetheless. Improved mindset, lower le level stress levels, better sleep, decreased anxiety and depression, lower risk of illness, illness, illnesses, um, and upgrades in learning potential can simply be achieved by riding a bike through a city park or walking in the dog in a forest to a day spent climbing in the, nat in the wild. Exposure to nature has been connected to a large group of benefits. It doesn't cost anything, and nature's powers are now being realized by the BC health officials. In BC, doctors are now prescribing nature as something for, to help people. The most studied benefit is reduced stress. Students with busy schedules can quickly become overwhelmed and, and overwhelmed and stressed, which puts a significant burden on the prefrontal cortex of our brain. This is the area involved in multitasking, higher order thinking, and critical thinking like problem solving. When small demands like deadlines, tests, and constant notifications add up, it drains our attention resources, making us distracted and cognitively fatigued. Therefore, making it difficult to focus, think deeply, and come up with new ideas which is all important for school. The research of a neuroscientist named David Strayer has shown that the prefrontal cortex is less active when people are in a natural environment. The prefrontal cortex is given a chance to take a break and relax. It enhances higher order thinking, restores attention, and boosts creativity. It doesn't take much to achieve that. Walking in the city park or any green space for as little as 25 minutes a day can boost cognitive functioning. The brain doesn't stop developing until early adulthood so it's even more important for the young brain to relax and take breaks outside. Exposure to natural light is important for everyone, especially for youth who spend lots of time inside school buildings with windows to the hallway. Various studies have shown that the exposure to, na to natural light can help improve your mood, prevent your sightedness, and improve your self-esteem. Natural light can boost serotonin levels in the body, and serotonin is the main um, hormone that balances our mood and stabilizes feelings. One Australian study found that people had higher levels of serotonin on bright sunny days than on cloudy ones. Exposing yourself to natural light by hiking to the summit of a local mountain can make you happier, but it doesn't have to be that strenuous. A walk along the beach would have the same effect. Also, having trouble in school? Sit by a window. Natural light will enhance your productivity. A study found that students working in natural light recorded higher levels of energy than those working in artificial. And when spending long periods of time around fluorescent lighting, computer screens, and cell phone screens, our vision become, um, can be damaged and at more risk of developing nearsightedness. Eyes work harder when they have to read from a screen because the computer, um, because of computer, computer images are made of pixels, tiny dots that have a bright center and blurred edges. Print it, Printed images and words, by comparison, are solid and well-defined. Our eyes constantly have to focus, relax, and refocus, refocus to read the pixels, 
which tires out the muscles. There's a simple cure, however, the outdoors, escaping the screens and allowing our eyes to focus on focus in wide open spaces, ideally in the outdoors, um, protects our vision from excessive strain. Thankfully, there are no walls in the outdoors and, our, and it allows our eyesight to thrive. Eyesight is a gift and protecting it by going outside is much more favorable than headaches and aching eyes. Outdoor exposure also helps our mental health in the form of reducing anxiety and depression. Researchers at Stanford found that the students who spend time in nature showed less activity in the part of the brain associated with depression compared to their urban counterparts. Another study proved that even looking at na images of nature or listening to nature sounds can better help you recover from fear and anxiety. Nature also helps kids who suffer from ADHD. A study found that a 20 minute walk in the park can improve concent concentration scores with with in kids with intention, attention deficit disorder. Just a simple walk in the park or a hike can wash away any fear and make kids happier. An example of this is a practice called Shinrin Yoku. Introduced by the Japanese government, Shinrin Yoku roughly translates to forest bathing. It is where people go into forests to relax and improve their mood. It was created in response to the Japanese suicide epidemic in, 19, in the 1980s. The rates of suicide were higher than Jap in Japan than they had ever seen. The government, oh, sorry. And the government turned to nature and, so and science to help its people. The government made easy access to trails and made many green areas around their cities. Investigations on the psychological effects that result from being outside started in the 1990s to today. The results show that many positive effects on the human brain with happier moods and improved mental health. Thankfully, Japan's suicide rate has steadily come down and then and Shin, Shinrin Yoku is being globally adopted. Sleep is extra important for teenagers and kids because their brains are growing very quickly and the process of growth is very taxing on the human body. Sleep contributes to almost every function in the body and getting better sleep benefits the brain as well, allowing it to promote attention, get memory and analytical thought. Natural light, natural light can realign the brain's circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm is like an internal clock within our head. It controls our natural sleep-wake cycle and resets roughly 24 hours. Light at the wrong time, like screens and ambient lighting, may disrupt our circadian rhythms and sleep. Walks outside, running on a trail, or reading a book on the deck are all easy options to improve our ever so important sleep. Youth today are more isolated indoors and school can be overwhelming and tiring. Instead of upping our efforts to meet those demands, a better solution may as well be to go outside. Build into your schedule, hang out with friends outside rather than inside, jo join different outdoor programs and clubs. Nature is the most readily available option to help you. Going back to our roots and to explore outdoors helps us reestablish a connection. It inspires us and it can be and it can better our lives in so many different ways. Instead of going home this afternoon to your phone or your computer, I challenge you to change your habits and get back into nature. Don't take your time outside for granted. Stop to look at the world, feel it, smell it, experience it, and embrace it. You all have the power to do that. When you leave this building today, do not exit, but enter. Thank you. feedback and helpful advice. Without you, this project would have never, ever gone done. Thank you, Emma Sparling, my external advisor. Even though we didn't meet very often, you still gave crucial advice for the beginning stages of my story writing. Thank you, Jennifer Henriksen. You really are the heart and soul of the master's program because you helped everyone find topics, get things done on time, and read everyone's paper and still give detailed, detailed feedback whenever needed. Mom, Dad, you were very willing to help, and your support with pre and post surgery was very appreciated. 
I don't think this film would exist if I didn't have your financial aid either. <laughs> Thank you to Sean. He was someone who was brave enough to teach me how to use his drone um, and kind enough to let me use some of his film that he had already shot. The cast, for the ones of you in this room, thank you for putting up with my bossy remarks and making the, you redo things a million times. You were all so kind to spend your time helping me out, especially the ones who were willing to film for me. And thank you all for listening to my masterworks today. <laughs> Glad you made us very proud here. I'm going to start the question period with your advisor, Easton, and uh, we'll carry on to the rest of the school tonight. First of all, I'd like to say I'm so proud of you. I think that uh, after you tore your ACL and we had our first meeting, in which you said, I don't know if I can film anything anymore, we're going to have to redo everything. Yep. You would never imagine a dream of like doing what you did. I'm so amazed with what you accomplished. Thank you. Um, my first question is, now that you've finished making your own adventure film, what advice would you give someone who's making their first film, and what key processes would you recommend? Making a film like the one I did, even though it's only five and a half minutes, is a big process. It takes a lot of time and dedication, even though there's obstacles along the way. Um, I would advise that you don't practice procrastinate to the last minute. And the more detail you have in your film plan, the better, like, the more I had a plan for what I was going to film, the easier it was to do that, because if I didn't, I would probably end up with a lot of shots I didn't need, and they probably wouldn't be very good. Um, organizing ideas, writing things down, and definitely rewriting until you're happy with your storyline was definitely very big for me, because if you write it once, it's not going to be, like Wiley, she said, if you rewrite things many times, you get better and better, so that's definitely one thing. Um, when editing, organize all of your clips first, and probably, you could even rename some of the videos, because I sift through like four hours worth of video for a five minute film, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, always keep your main point and your theme in the back of your mind while doing the whole process because that will help you just connect everything more in a better way. Thank you, that was awesome. Uh, after researching all the benefits of the outdoors and teenagers, how has it impacted you? Have you implemented, implemented any of your own recommendations? If so, how successful has it been? Um, I definitely realized when I started thinking about like, oh, I could be going to work outside now. Like I'd be working on the couch and then I'm like, I'm going to move outside because I feel better if I'm working outside. Um, yeah, I definitely noticed it a lot more. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't do a lot of the activities I wanted to do um, because of my knee, but I definitely will be in the future. Awesome. And then my last one. So your research about the outdoors has shown widespread benefits to everybody. Do you think that the society we live in right now is conducive to being outdoors? If not, what changes would you make in the society to allow people to get back to nature? Well, I know that since COVID, like camping gear and all these outdoor activities are just skyrocketing. Like people are getting outside in local areas than traveling. So that is very good. It's like one, one benefit of COVID. Um, yeah, so where we live in Vancouver is great. Like a lot of the people in this room probably go outside a lot too. Um, but schools, like IPS is great for going outside. But other schools, I mean, I think we should work outdoors into learning and being outside because it makes it, and to make it normal to be outdoorsy. Yeah, the government support and making it available for the outdoors is probably a pretty good key factor to making people go outside. Ms. McLeod, so proud of you. Um, <clears throat> um, I sent your uh, paper off to Dr. Ted Spear because everything that you said in your paper, which was quite lengthy as well as spending like hundreds of hours editing a film, yep. so huge kudos to you for that, but everything that you wrote about in the reasons why we go outside uh, are the foundations for this school and all the programs that we run, so uh, a kudos from Dr. Spear to you for recognizing that and kudos to the school for knowing that it's such a huge benefit to the youth um, in our little world here. So I'm going to turn it over to questions from the floor, my goodness. Um, okay, Chloe, Hannah, Sam, Priya, Beth. 
story plan of what I was going to film before I tore my ACL and that consisted of like hiking, skiing and I really thought that my, I could take my family and go do trips and then film that but instead I kind of went back to like little shorter clips of things I could do and that was closer to this um to like roads and stuff like that so I didn't have to like you know walk on a trail and stuff like that. I think if I didn't tear my ACL this film would be more about adventure rather than why, I mean, obviously why we should go outside, but it would be more like a, this is this adventure and this is how it went sort of film. Excellent, excellent masterworks, Mr. Cloud. I am very happy with how this turned out. I'm so glad I got to see it. Thanks, um, I have two questions for you. My first one is, what is your favorite, like, mm, area of, like, like, what was the airport? Outdoors airports? to be in. So would you rather be on a snowy mountain or in a forest or on a beach? Um, I have always loved being in the mountains. The mountains are a big part of like how I grew up. We'd be going on the Sea Sky Highway every weekend and I'd just look out the window and be like, there's the Tantalus, there's the Black Tusk, there's Whistler, there's Black Elm. And my parents will definitely say I did that a lot. Yeah, I love forests and mountains. I think are my favorite. And then my second question: Are you planning a sequel? <laughs> so, would it be a longer film detailing an adventure, or would it be more of a documentary about why we should be outside more? I mean, I definitely love the process of making this. The thing is, with a film, it's like a painting. You can always add. You can always edit it. You can always redo it. So, I think I'm just going to continue on for this film and see where it takes me. But a sequel would be very cool. Um, I also have two questions. Number one being, what would you suggest to people who are like in big cities, like, I don't know, New York or other places, mm -hmm. that don't have so much access to the outdoors? What would you suggest for them? I mean, a lot of research shows that just going into the city park, like, um, uh, what's the park called in New York? Central, Central park. park, yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of studies show that just going into a park or any green space like allows our brain to take a break and it even boosts, boosts our immune system and everything like that. But if you want to get into more outdoorsy places, um, the Appalachian Mountains are not that far, so you could always take a little trip. Um, my second question was, I might have missed this, but what would be the number of things you change about the school to make it more outdoor? Like, would you change the exercise set? <laughs> I mean, me and Easton actually had a plan to slap a piece of paper that said enter on the exit sign, but I ran out of time. Um, this school is pretty great. Like, the, for, like, one of the reasons I really loved it in the first place in grade six was because of its trips. And I think, yeah, the school does a pretty good job, but I think other schools should change more. Very well done, Ms. McLeod. Uh, I loved your film. My question for you is, if you could go on any adventure anywhere in the world, where would you go and what would you do? I'd like to climb Mount Everest. Great job. My question for you is, what was your favorite part of filming? What was your favorite part of filming or what was my favorite part of the film? What was your favorite part of like, filming your video? Oh, um, uh, the drone was really fun. We went. Um, we, have a hel we have a cabin in Whistler, and we just went past on this trail, and my, yeah, my friend's dad taught me how to use it, and we took it, and it was just really cool to see, like, um, what you see in bigger films, but what was going through the phone, and then you see the little drone come back. But there was a lot of cool things, like I got to film Jake mountain biking, which was really fun. I got to film my friend Amelia downtown, I got to film, um, yeah, so many different things. Ms. McLeod, what was the name of the program that you were using? Uh, it's called Adobe Premiere Pro. 
And would you recommend that for beginner filmmakers? I mean, I'm thinking about uh, Ms. Durand and Ms. Stiver doing their film. I don't know, I would assume that the, they were on iMovie. Yeah. Is that right, Ms. Durand? Yeah. They were on iMovie. How much of a learning curve is there for you to learn the whole program? I mean, um, iMovie is still good. Like, you guys made a great film with iMovie, but I wanted something a bit more technical. So, Premiere Pro, they give you a lot of, like, YouTube tutorials on how to use it, but you have to experiment a lot with it. You have to just try yourself to see what it is. It was a big jump. Like, I had never seen it before, and I tried to learn it on my own because I'm just that kind of person. Um, yeah, but I learned it in the end, and it's honestly a great program if you know how to use it. Yeah, now you do. So yeah, you exactly. Okay, more questions. Uh, who's back there? Ella and Carrie. And um, who hasn't been up here a lot? Malcolm Scott, if you especially like. Okay, Janet. Great job, Mr. McLeod. So let's say, for example, if certain people like didn't want to be in like nature like at all, what would you recommend? Not for, you know, what would you recommend for them like get in nature? If you didn't want to be, well, I would say baby steps to going outside. Like taking a walk in the park is less strenuous than you know hiking up a mountain. So baby steps from there on would be good because then you have to start very important. Incredible job, Mr. Class. Um, what is your favorite thing to do outside? My favorite thing to do outside? It's a hard one. I mean, I love to ski. Definitely love to ski. Um, I love sea kayaking. Um, rafting. I love rafting. I don't have too many to choose from. <laughs> Uh, I just want to go up your movie debuts here on like you know, what? Um, I'm just wondering, so you mentioned earlier in response to Ethan's question about the outdoors needing to be more accessible to everyone. And it's really true that I think aside from maybe going for a walk, the outdoors is a luxury um, that a lot of people can't afford. Um, and so what do you think maybe the government or within the education system we can do to make the outdoors more accessible to everyone? Well, outdoor learning has been shown to have a lot of benefits for kids. And so schools, I think, should just integrate, like, I mean, I guess PE is already mostly outside, but like outdoor gyms and like outdoor learning, like an outdoor classroom would be great. And the government, um, there's a lot of pensions going around to like get more parks and to have more trails. But I think they should start getting more accessibility for like hikes and more accessibility to like lakes because that's like I don't want to say true nature but it's like it's away from like cities so I think that's the not more important but I think that's really cool if they do that. Great job Ms. McLeod and I accept the challenge of going outside. <laughs> Great. Um, one, my one question was like is there a local area around Vancouver that you would like to go to to like get outside? For you or for me? Oh, okay. Um, well, I've been a lot of places around Vancouver, but some place I haven't been yet, which I saw actually on TikTok, but it's called Golden Years Park and it has these amazing little pools of water and it's got little waterfalls and I really want to go there because it looks really cool. Miss McLeod, that was an outstanding presentation Thank and you. I am so inspired having listened to you, particularly knowing your age and the thoughtfulness and the consideration you have as a 15 year old to be challenging this amazing world of super saturated media that we live in. I mean, you are really um, speaking to my heart and soul and I, as Jen said, speaking to the heart and soul of, of the school that we, we share here. And I'm, I just really want to compliment you on that. And I remember at some point, Earlier in the year, before you you uh, hurt your knee, there, there was there was some kind of conversation. It was about screen use. I think you got busted at home, probably. <laughs> oh there, there was something there. We can all relate to that. Those of us, whether we're parents or teachers or, or whatever, and, and too much screen. But I'm just wondering um, how you're feeling about that challenge. And
and, and maybe how you might coach your fellow schoolmates here to, to take on that challenge. And Zen, you know, publicly just accepted your challenge, and, and I'm curious just if there's some additional words of, of guidance to people. And, and, and by extension, did you, do you feel like you've improved in that world yourself, personally, with respect to your, your handhelds and your screens? Right. Um, yeah, definitely. I definitely have caught myself many times being on my phone like every other teenager does. But I'm, now I know everything about the outdoors and its benefits that I didn't exactly know before. Like, I knew I loved it, but I didn't know how much it does for my body and my mind. Um, yeah, I definitely catch myself more, and it's advice for other people to get off their screens, is that you can learn more and do way more outside than you can just sitting on your phone. I've learned that. Um, I haven't had too, too much time to just fully integrate myself into the outdoors instead of at home, but I'm willing to try. Great. Well, again, kudos. So my last thing is, is more of a request than a question. I would love if you would give the school permission to showcase that beautiful and, and courageous film you put together as part of um, you know, our website. And uh, I think you know, it, it's profound, and, and it's something that would be hugely beneficial to families that are out there considering. Because as, as you said, and, and as uh, Jen mentioned, and, and the founding head of the school, we. We are trying to differentiate ourselves that way, and, and I know that um, all your teachers work hard all the time to think about that. So if, if you can't answer me now, if I can, then I'll, I'll wait for you, but I'm really hoping that you'll, <laughs> you'll give us permission to use your film. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. Pilot.